futures, foreign currency, and options trading contains substantial risk and is not suitable for every investor. Is it possible to lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And also please remember that these training sessions are not a solicitation or recommendation, but simply educational in nature. Thank you again for joining us today. Without further ado, it's my pleasure to welcome to the NinjaTrader webinar room, Tony. Take it away, Tony. All right, Thomas, thank you. I appreciate it. And I thank uh, NinjaTrader for inviting me, having me here. Um, and all of you for showing up today. Hopefully you can all see my screens. All right, so what are we doing today? We're going to talk about day trading pullbacks from a trend, okay? So we're going to specifically talk about what's happening inside of a trend. I know we all know what a trend is, but this is going to help us to understand these pullbacks if we understand what's going on inside a trend. And we get a lot of people that ask, are you counter trend traders? As if that's something that's, you know, that's something they've heard that is a bad thing and they only want to be trend traders. And, and I'm going to answer that for you and I'm going to explain that to you. Um, we're going to talk about why price pulls back from a trend and um, what are the trading requirements for our pullback style of trading, All right? And we're going to talk about the importance of momentum in our pullback trading. And then we're gonna talk about the anatomy and characteristics of specifically a pullback trade. Now we're gonna talk about generalities today. We're gonna to go into a lot more specifics on Saturday. And in fact, I only have an allotted amount of time here today, but on Saturday, we have as much time as we want. And uh, you can ask as many questions as you want. We can go in a lot more detail. And finally today, like I said, we're going to have that special offer. So here's the event um, on Saturday, the training event that I was talking about. I put that link in the chat for you um, and please register for that. Okay. All right. So inside of every trend are more trends. Okay. So it really depends on the view that you decide to look at to determine what trend you're going to decide is the, is the important trend. Now, if you look at this, you can obviously see that we have an upward bias here. We have an upward trend, okay? So if I took a, a sell, you know, if I sold anywhere along this trend, would you consider me a counter trend trader? Okay, but, but what about now? What if I took a, a trade where that black arrow is. Now am I a counter trend trader or am I a trend trader? Okay. So when I'm asked, are you a counter trend trader or are you a trend trader? Uh, it, it really doesn't matter. My answer is yes and no, you know, and I have to ask a lot of questions to be able to answer their question, which is which, what trend are you valuing the most? What's, why is a, one specific trend more important to you than another, okay? So again, the answer is kind of yes and no, but we we say we trade pullbacks from a trend and those can be long-term trends, short-term trends. It really doesn't matter to us. Our trades actually take place in both directions, okay? We don't care. Um, so if somebody says, are you a counter trend trader? Yeah, yeah, I am. Or no, I'm not. it really depends on the, on the setup. We're just looking for good opportunities to take trades where we have a high probability that it's going to be a successful trade. How you want to characterize that or, or categorize it or classify that is totally up to you. Okay, we don't like to try to fit in any type of a box. We don't really care about the, you know, the assumptions and expectations and the preconceived notions that people come into trading with. 
we kind of blazing our own path here and we've been doing it for 14 years now. So it's working out pretty good. So why do we see pullbacks inside of every trend? You know, it's really just the nature of traders in the markets. You know, when people or institutions think price is too high, they begin selling to take some profits. And this is eventually starts to price dry up, uh, drive price down to the point where now the traders in the market start to feel that price kind of getting cheap again. It might be a bargain, might be time to buy it again. There are price levels where this happens. And these are often influenced by the market makers. Okay, And, and there's a, a lot of what we do has to do with those market makers that we all cuss when they come in and they whip us out of a trade. Uh, a lot of people call them stop hunters or whatever, but they're the market makers that manipulate price in order for them to take advantage of the manipulation and, and make their profits, all right? So the market makers will determine when and how uh, price uh, gets set up in their favor. Okay, so let's let's take a look at how they do this. Okay, so if you look down here on the bottom left, you'll see an area of channeling, right? And it looks like nothing much is really going on. But to be honest, what's happening is these big boys, the the market makers, the smart money, okay. These are the hedge funds and the quants and the HFTs that you hear about that have all the money and all the power and can do kind of what they want when they want. OK, so what they're going to do during this phase of manipulation, they're going to go through accumulation where they want to slowly and steadily. Gobble up as much of this asset as they can while it's at a really good price, but. If they did it quickly, they would tell everybody in the world what's going on, okay? So they don't wanna do that. They wanna do it on relatively low volume, okay? They wanna kind of just be very sneaky and stealthy about it. So once they start to get, get a, a you know corner in the market on this asset, then they're going to, manipulate a little bit again and they're going to pump it up just a little bit now why would they do that well they want to see if price holds at this at this little bit higher level so they may want to at this point depending on how people buy that asset as it's heading up depending on that does it seem like now's the time to start taking profit or do we have the opportunity to maybe pump it up a little bit more, okay? Well, if if how the buyers were buying, if they appeared to be becoming exhausted, they may go through a, a period of distribution where they wanna start taking profit, okay? And this happens over and over and over again. And, and accumulation and distribution look very much the same to us. To us, us um, uh, retail traders, it just looks like price is channeling and there's nothing going on and there's low interest. And so, and for what we do, we don't really care because we're not going to trade during this. But it does help us to understand when our edge presents itself. Okay. So it's very important that we understand the accumulation, the distribution, the markup uh, areas. And this happens over and over and over again until eventually after they've taken all their profits, they, they do a markdown phase. In this markdown phase, they'll take the remaining assets that they're holding and they're going to dump all those assets on the market all at once. And all of the buyers are going to uh, become exhausted almost immediately and supply is going to overwhelm demand. And if you know anything about economics or you've been trading for any period of time, you know that this is all about supply and demand. And when, 
when there's little supply but high demand, prices go up and vice versa, okay? That's what these guys are doing. And they're doing it every day and they're doing it over and over and over again. So we're going to talk about the pullback trading and what it's re what's required for us to take advantage of this, okay? Here's the beauty. We don't have to predict anything. All we do is sit and watch and wait. No predicting. There's no market analysis necessary. I don't know how many of you guys uh, get up early in the morning so you can, you know, uh, uh, listen to the talking heads, analyze the markets and tell you what they think is going to happen throughout the day based on a bunch of information that might have become available over the last few hours. We don't do any of that. All we do is react, okay? We don't guess. We're not watching television. We don't have any confusing signals, meaning the only signals we have are yes or no. Yes, take the trade. No, don't take the trade. There are no shades of gray where we say, well, this indicator is kind of saying this, and this is kind of saying that. And the guy I was listening to last night said I should do this, but this, this says I should do something else. And so I'll do some combination thereof. And there's none of that. And I've been through all of that. All right. All we have is simple rules. We, we have a good plan. And the cornerstone of what we do and the reason that we're so successful at, that, at, at what we do is because we practice and practice and practice using uh, Ninja Traders playback connection, using market replay data, okay? We have an edge that we have for 14 years been exploiting. But when people look at it, they go, oh, man, you have to be so fast. How can you trade that edge? when you're so, you practice. So the whole cornerstone of everything that we do, it, it was for me when I was struggling for seven years, I, I struggled to find an edge. I struggled and, and I just never did. Well, I finally did, but it's a, it, it might be perceived as an edge that's difficult to trade, but it's really not as long as you work at it and it's a skill to be developed. Well, that's different. I can do that, you know. <laughs> Excuse me. So that's the cornerstone of what we do. So we're just looking for a confluence of market conditions. And when we have that confluence, when everything, all these things are happening at the same time, all we have to do is react. Again, it's like sitting, uh, we talk about this all the time in the trade room. It's like sitting and waiting on a bus. There's when you're waiting on a bus, there's nothing to do. You can't make a bus happen. It's going to get there when it gets there. And when it gets there, you better be ready to get up and get on that bus. So that's all we do. We're, we're watching momentum. We're watching order flow. We want to see when price is becoming overbought or oversold so that we can anticipate exhaustion. And then when we can put all of those together, and say, okay, we've had a strong move. We've had strong flow of orders suggesting that the markets are being manipulated and the buyers or sellers are now becoming exhausted. And not only are they becoming exhausted, but momentum has already shifted direction. So for those of you that don't know about divergence, what we're, what we're reading, what we're measuring is the divergence between price and momentum. Typically they run together, but when they start, when they're running opposite of each other, when one's going up while the other one's going down, well, that's telling us, that gives us, that's the heads up that everybody's been looking for to let you know that price is about to change direction because it's too exhausted to move in the direction it's been going and momentum has already shifted direction. When that happens, price will almost always try to catch up with momentum. It's like it looked back over his shoulder and goes, oh, crap, momentum's going the other way. I got to go that way. All right. When we put those together, 
there's nothing to do but react. All right, so we're going we're gonna to talk about how momentum traders help us with this. Okay, so for momentum traders, momentum is not a, it's not a fixed amount or percentage of the market. It's all relative, okay? It's relative to recent or past conditions. People who are momentum traders are typically going to be the the hedge funds and the the uh, the, the the big money, the smart money. Okay, they're going to take advantage of a trend, but they're going to do it from level to level inside of a trend. Okay. That's where momentum traders have their edge. If you've ever heard, um, you know, buy low, sell high. That's what that's what we've all been taught uh, is if you want to buy something really cheap and then sell it really expensive. Momentum traders have a little bit different philosophy. Momentum traders say buy high, sell higher. Okay, so they're all about just making sure that price can move a little bit higher so they can take uh, advantage of that situation, okay? <laughs> They're trying to capture a strong move inside of this trend, okay? So when price breaks out of these channels, they want to jump in and capture these breakouts, okay? So what they what they want to do, this is how it this is how it looks. We're gonna break we're gonna break this into one phase or one one section of this multi-phase uh, operation here uh, that they do all day long, every day. And and if you don't believe me, pull up any time chart, time based chart on any instrument that's liquid, and you're gonna see this pattern. You're gonna see these patterns over and over and over again, okay? So if you look at this chart, it's, it's pretty typical, all right? But under analysis, it's still the same set of patterns being repeated over and over and over again. You see that price is channeling, could be low interest, could be accumulation, could be distribution. We don't know, we don't really care. For our purposes, we don't really care. So the buying sentiment suddenly increases for what appears to be no particular reason, okay? You start seeing a sudden bidding up of price. Momentum traders start getting triggered to buy as much as they can, as fast as they can. That's when you start seeing Price, you just go, what the heck just happened? I'm sitting here and price has just been kind of chugging along and all of a sudden something just happened and you look at news events and you, you're trying to figure out what just happened. This is what's happening. They're going to try to buy up as much as they can, as fast as they can, causing a sudden shortage, which drives what happens? Supply and demand starts to drive price even higher over the short term. Okay. When there are no more apparent buyers and, and they know how to tell based on how active the buyers are and how excited the buyers are to jump in, when it seems that they're no longer as excited, this is when they start dumping everything as fast as they can. All of the assets that they just acquired, they're going to dump them and they're going to start driving down price, okay? Now, this could be a, a, uh, uh, a short-term pullback. It could be a reversal. We don't know. And again, for our purposes, we don't really care. As long as we've got this aha, that something specific happens every single time. <coughs> something for the, I, so I had this idea. I started noticing this exact pattern you're looking at right here. 
happening all the time. And my mission was, okay, so I get this great big bar here that happens after this, okay? And then we get this up, and then I get a great big bar, and then price does this. Happens all the time. So I started thinking, what does is, what is this bar have to tell me? Whatever's going on inside this bar, something happened somewhere to cause this. Okay, so that's where my study began. That was an aha for me. But there are certain things I know about the markets. And there are certain types of traders out there. So essentially, there's three different types, okay? Those that do a value analysis, okay? These are, these are the guys that uh, are out there actively seeking undervalued uh, instruments, stocks, futures, options, based on fundamental analysis like uh, the, the price earnings ratio, stock splits, acquisitions, earnings reports, that kind of stuff, okay? The next type of traders out there are, are the more, more common. They're, they're going to be technical analysis traders to determine a trend. And they're going to want to continue to ride the trend because that's what everybody else is doing. So let's get on that wave and let's just ride it with everybody else. So essentially a trend, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, is just a, a series of higher highs or higher lows or lower highs, low, lower lows. Um, and if you want to see two or more together, then we can call that a trend, okay? And there's a, there's a big uh, uh, school of people that uh, teach trading with the trend, okay? Whole bunch of people teach trading with the trend. I tried it for a long time. One specific thing, uh, problem I had with it, which I'll tell you in a minute, then we have the momentum traders. These now we're talking about the big boys, with the the HFTs, the big guns, the guys we can't possibly compete with. And these are the buy high, sell higher guys, in and out in a hurry. All right. So the analysis people they're they're looking at something to be undervalued. Uh, they don't know if it's low interest, accumulation, distribution, they're going to come in and that's where they're going to be in interested. The momentum guys want to actually see interest, not just channeling, okay? That's when they're going to come in. They're going to buy and sell very quickly on these big pushes, okay? And again, Happens over and over and over again. Price gets at a pretty good value where people may think that, yeah, okay, we're getting a little over what I think it's worth at this point. So people start selling off and taking a little bit of profit. Okay. Again, low interest. We've got momentum breaking out of it. Price gets up here at an, at an area where people are like, I'm not sure that it's worth this much. Let's let's dump off a little bit here. Let's see. And, and on it goes and goes and goes until we get to the final, like I talked about, where you just dump it off and there's a big markdown. So the value, I, you know, that's not really my type of trading. That's going to be, to me, almost like investing. <laughs> Investors spend a lot of time doing value analysis for a longer term type trade. That type of trading never appealed to me. Uh, that's not really the type of person I am. Um, so doing that type of, being that type of trader, not so much. I wanted to be a day trader, okay? And I wanted to be done at the end of every day. But I also thought, well, I'm going to go and I'm going to listen to what they're telling me at. Um, uh, on YouTube and in trading forums and in webinars and everything I listened to, everything that I was told, you got to trade the trend. Got to be the trend. Trend is your friend. Okay. 
unfortunately for me, that caused me a lot of angst. That caused me a lot of emotions, um, a lot of fear and panic and sadness and just becoming overwhelmed because you never know when one of those pullbacks is a reversal. And you're supposed to be staying in this trend during the pullbacks. And he's like, ah, oh, just chill out. The, all the indicators say that price is going to go this way. And of course, during that period of time, the longer you're in it, the more speculative the trade becomes because the conditions of the market are constantly changing and being influenced. Okay, so the conditions when you got in the market, maybe way down here, and your mission is to stay in it up here, those conditions are changing all the time, being influenced all the time. So for me, being a trend trader was, was excruciating and I failed at it miserably. And of course, I don't have the, the wherewithal, the, <laughs> I don't have the assets to, to be one of these momentum trader guys. Uh, so pretty much I'm looking at this. So I was like, where, okay, can't do the value analysis. I can't really do momentum. I can't really trade the trend. What can I do? Where's the edge that I can do for me that, that suits me? So none of it really did. So I started looking more carefully, and that's when I, that's when I found these little pullbacks. <laughs> and they, and the, the beauty is, is they're predictable, and they happen over and over and over again. And the big boys don't care about that. So it's nice that we can go in and we can exploit our advantage and nobody cares. There's not a lot, lot of competition for these trades, okay? Um, I have had people ask me, hey, if it's so good, how come everybody's not doing it? And does that dilute your edge? Not even close. Most people, for some reason, and, and I guess I was one of them too for a long time. Most people don't really want to look for small trades. You, you've been convinced by other things that you've seen out there in the internet world that small trades are bad. Scalping is bad. Um, the, the fees are too high. Um, you know, there's all types of things out there that that they want you to believe that after you actually do it for a while, you realize, well, that wasn't true, all right? Now, just because price is going up, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's something of interest to the momentum traders, but it's important for us to know when it is. So we have to take constant and precise measurements inside each bar, okay? So let's look at the anatomy of a pullback trade. This is a, a trade setup that as it's setting up, it would start getting my attention because the confluence of events are starting to build up, okay? I'm starting to see, you know, uh, the first thing happens, all right? Price starts breaking out of a channel. That's one. Okay. Now it got my attention. So we get a strong push up. Okay. Once we get that strong push up, price becomes overbought. That's this outline right here on this bar. That's one of our indicators. Okay. The momentum traders are triggered. This is another one of our indicators called a speed tick. Okay. This is our pullback alert. We're reading the price action inside this bar and we're reading the volume inside this bar. We will only print one of our indicators up here if we get one or two of a particular type of price action that we're looking for. We don't want a price that just starts down here and ends up here, okay? And then the next bar opens. 
we want to say a particular type of price action inside this bar. And when we get that price action, we're reading every tick that comes into this bar. When we get the particular type of price action, we're going to print this to, to, to say, hey, look, this is a really good time for the sellers to start taking over because the buyers are becoming exhausted and the sellers are the ones that are now taking control, okay? This is our rock star indicator, okay? On the open of this bar, if we have this confluence of events and then we get this rock star, which is a, a divergence indicator along with a number of other indicators, including this one, uh, the obos is in there and divergence. There's a lot of stuff going on inside this rock star. But this tells us that all of this is going this way, but momentum has shifted direction. So we've hit like a brick wall here uh, with sellers that are just sitting here waiting and our buyers trading right into those sellers. Buyers are becoming exhausted. Sellers aren't exhausted. They've been sitting here waiting. They're ready to go right here. All right. This is where we would take this trade and we would short it right here. Let's sell it right here. Okay. This is what we're going to be um, talking about on Saturday. And we'll show you how you can be quick enough to do this. <clears throat> if you say, I can't be quick enough, I can't do it fast enough. What you're telling me is, I haven't practiced this very much. Because it becomes second nature. And I can prove it to you because for 14 years, we've been doing it in our trade room and we have some of the same traders that have been coming in our trade room for at least 10 years, every day, been trading it the same way. It is doable if you want to do the work. That's the issue, okay? And this is what it looks like on a, on a chart. Over time, it just happens over and over and over again. All right. So what are the characteristics of our trades? <clears throat> There's really no need for emotion control. When I created this system, I, one of the very first things I wanted to do was remove the need to manage my emotions. Why did I do that? Because I sucked at it. I kept trying and trying and trying to manage my emotions, to uh, you know, sit through the longer term trends where I feel like, uh, you know, well, the rules say I'm supposed to do this. Uh, why don't I? Why don't I go ahead and just stay in this trade? And got by golly, I'm, and but I couldn't because as soon as price started going against me, I would panic and do stupid things and. I was just, I constantly felt like I'd been kicked in the gut. Um, every day was just another day for another kick in the gut. So I was looking for something that didn't require emotion, you know, management of emotions. This is very low stress because it's all yes, no. Yes, no. That's it. Is it a setup? Trade it. Not a setup, don't trade it. And all of our indicators are what's called um, heads up display indicators. You see these indicators over here? This is all we trade with. We have no other charts. We have nothing else. Everything I need to know about placing a trade right here is on the chart right there in front of my eyes. Only the information I need for making a trade decision is right there. All of the, you notice you're not seeing a bunch of wavy lines and oscillators and stuff like that. That's just areas of gray. <coughs> Shades of gray, all right? 
This is very low stress. This is about as stressful as waiting for a bus and, and worried you might miss the bus, maybe. So the, all we have is yes or no decisions. There's no real complicated trade management. Um, the nice thing is, is you can start out, and this, of course, I would recommend that you start out sim trading a single contract, and then you practice, 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 work your way up to a point where you've mastered the setups and the, uh, uh, the setups become second nature to you. You've proven to yourself via trading in sim that you can grow a trading account and then you add another contract. Continue to sim for a while until you've proven, okay, I'm ready to go live here, All right? Go live, go back to a single contract, work your way up by growing your account a certain amount and go from there. So this system is great. Well, I don't need uh, exit indicators. This system is great for somebody who's a beginner and you want to trade single contracts up to trading multiple contracts and you scale your entry in. I'll only scale in. I don't scale out. We hard target out. That's it. Hard target. Thank you, Bob. Jump in here as much as you can. Bob, you see, you guys see Bob, right? Bob, how long you been in our trade room with us? Uh, 10 years at least, right? Uh, he's one of the, he's one of our guys that uh, since the beginning, yeah, 14 years. Okay. So yeah, he's, uh, he knows as much or, uh, about all of this as I do. And he's just one of our, our guys that bought our, one of our programs and has been with us every day ever since. So obviously this stuff works and it's a great way to grow. You can start at the basics, which is exactly what we all need to do. And then all the all the instruments have the same rules. So you don't have to apply different rules to different instruments because the instruments have different characteristics or personalities or, you know, different volume or different, they trade different ways on different, it's all the same, same instruments, same rules, same settings on the indicators. The focus is not on making money. The focus is follow the trade plan. <clears throat> You're only, um, Francis, I can't say that here, but I, you can send me an email down here at the support at the intentional trader.com. And I can send you something that you can see the win rate for this system. Yeah, sorry, I said I wasn't going to reach chat, but I'm coming up here on the end. And so I'll be uh, able to answer some questions here in just a minute. So your only job, your only job when you sit down to trade, I know you guys are trying to do a lot of analysis and you're trying to, you know, you're trying to come up with things and you're trying to do all these different things while you're trading and making decisions and all that. Your only job during live trading is to follow your trade plan. That's it, is to execute your trade plan. You have no other job. There's no decisions to be made, okay? We teach you all this stuff in our fast forward program. There's a whole bunch more that goes with this. If you wanna see, if you haven't seen yet, if you wanna see our trades in action. There's a whole bunch of them that I I put these on our YouTube channel oh, every so often. Um, but there's hundreds of them um, on our YouTube channel. If you just see that link I just put in there. Um, but eventually you'll, you'll watch about 10, 15, 20 of them. And you'll start notice, noticing that they're, it's the same thing over and over and over again, but I still keep posting them, okay? So if you want to see our indicators in action, 
you want to see our set now. What you're seeing on these videos is an actual recording of our trade room. Okay, so the the voice is not a voiceover. I'll be talking through the trade. I'll call out the trade ahead of time. I'll talk about the trade afterwards. This is that's live during our trade room. That link is not working. The YouTube link. <clears throat> It's working here. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it, it's working here. Um, <clears throat> if you need to, just go to YouTube and uh, search the intentional trader. Okay. All right. So here's the special offer, guys. Um, we're going to give you a 20% discount. Here's the uh, page on our website for uh, the uh, programs. We have different programs, essentially bundle packages uh, of indicators and training. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to offer that to you guys for 20% uh, off for attending here today. So we really do appreciate you attending. Uh, I've got, how much time do I have? I think I've got a couple of minutes for questions, don't I, Thomas? I think I do. <clears throat> So if you guys ask questions earlier when I wasn't looking at the chat, I'm not going to scroll back and see if I can find them. So if you, uh, oh, the registration link doesn't seem to be working. Did you guys uh, register? Did everybody else, re did that link work for you? It, you might need to click on it instead of cop. It worked for you. Huh. Okay, well, uh, if you can't get it to work later, then um, send us an email and I'll get you registered. No, it's not on the screen. It's, on a, it's in the chat box here. Yeah, it's in the chat. You, it, the, yeah, the screen is not clickable. Are you looking at the chat right here? I just clicked that and it came right up for me. Yeah, we trade one minute charts. So uh, interesting question about automation. Uh, a lot of our indicators can be automated through uh, Bloodhound. A couple of them cannot, just Bloodhound just can't do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're in Dana Point right now, Bob. I don't know how settled we are, but yeah, we're here. We're here for now. We we do like it here, um, but we're so close to Pacific Coast Highway that where they do all the drag racing, <laughs> it can be really loud here. Is the starter program worth it? I think you should ask other traders that have done it. Oh, nice. Yeah, Laguna de Gale is really nice. Uh, Ari, I, we've got a lot of people that use our, our stuff in, uh, in uh, Forex. So I'm not sure why you would say that. No, cannot be automated through Ninja because we had to do... Uh, our, our indicators are very high performance indicators. And there are certain things that we push Ninja Trader to the very, very limits. Um, one of that is in their plots. And, and so we had to create some custom plots uh, that will not work in their strategy builders, but they will work inside of uh, Bloodhound. Yes. Okay. So we have three different packages. The first two are for people who generally are looking to either start very slowly and then grow into our pro trader program, or they're just looking for a group of indicators to add to something they're doing that is already um, successful, but they're looking for ways to scale. Uh, if they are trend traders, our, our indicators, now we trade the pullback. 
but that's also an excellent place for people to scale if they're trading in the other direction, right? So we have people that buy our stuff and use it the other way. But if you want to trade what we're trading, and if you're looking to turn your trading life around, if you've got some bad habits, you've had a, a tough time. I did too. I went through all of that. And so we have a whole education program that's inside of our Pro Trader program. Um, not only that, but with Pro Trader, you get anything we ever develop in the future for free. You get our essential add on suite for free. You get lifetime trade room. It comes included in it. You get priority support. I come on your computer and, and set everything up for you. If you ever have a problem, we, we, we log on to your computer and fix it for you. Um, if you can't fix it, you know, there's, there's just an awful lot of value. We're constantly adding more and more value to the Pro Trader program. The education program that I mentioned is um, uh, called Fast Forward, and I'm spending a lot of time right now upgrading that to a, um, a course. And it's got, it's, it keeps growing as I work on it more and more. It keeps getting bigger and bigger. So that is going to be offered um, as a, it'll be free for the people in our Pro Trader program. My mission is always get the Pro Trader program to continue to add as much value to it as, as we can. And so that's the next step to adding more value. Uh, the trade room, okay, so you get some trade room time with the two lower end. Uh, packages. I think you get like two weeks in the starter and two months with the extra income. And then the pro trader, it's you get the trade room for as much as you want. Um, yeah, pre-market. In fact, a lot of our traders are, do a lot of pre-market stuff before they even get in the room. Uh, money back guarantee. Yes. If, if we cannot get the uh, indicators to work on your computer the way they're designed to work, then yes, you, we, will, we will give you your money back. 100% of all purchases, um, uh, indicators and uh, uh, programs are credited to uh, a package upgrade. Yes, we use order flow. Uh, if you can make it Saturday, I'll, I'll go, I'm gonna go into that more, but absolutely. Bloodhound is a um, is a Ninja Trader add-on program made by a company called Shark Indicators, and it's great for testing, and it does automation. Uh, I'm not big on automation, and again, that's something that we could talk about on Saturday. But I'm not really big on automation for a number of reasons. No. Yes, we use volume. No, we do not use market profile. Remember that dot I showed you? That indicator that was just a dot with a three in it? That's volume. We use, a, that's, that's our volume indicator. And we only want to know when we have certain types of volume, not, not quantity. We're not looking at quantity. I'm looking at the flow of, volume okay so we call that order flow if you want um, there's all kinds of terms that seem to have overlapping meaning so you know 100 percent of whatever you if you start with the starter program whatever you paid for the starter program will be credited towards upgrading to to, to the next level whatever the price is of whatever that level is that you want to go to yeah, send me an email. The, down here, you see support at theintentionaltrader.com. Send an email there and I'll send you some information. Typically, see, I trade from 9, 9.30 a.m. until 12 noon. Typically, I'm going to say seven, five to seven trades, typically. Sometimes zero, sometimes 12. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, you can watch at both at the same time, can't you? 
I will record it for you, Tomenko, and, and send you the recording. We trade the ES, we don't trade the NQ because the NQ is uh, uh, too volatile right now. I trade about four hours a day, that's it. All right, Thomas, have I gone over? Am I about to run into a brick wall or do we have more time or what? I think we can take a few more questions if there are any. Okay, uh, ZB is too slow. Um, I trade uh, the 24 hour Jerry, ETH. Um, can't register for Saturday. If you run into any anybody there, any of you guys that have had issues with the links and not finding them that you have been able to, uh, just send us an email and we'll get you those links over to you. So send an email to support at the intentional trader.com. It, uh, uh, increasing position size depends on a lot of things. And um, that's our very, very much more advanced type stuff that we will teach you, but we really want you to start to not look at how much can you trade right off the bat. And we want you to focus on learning how to become a winning trader and then go from there. Uh, oh, the 20% expires. I didn't put that on here, did I? Uh, the uh, uh, Shoot, when does that expire? I think the end of next week. Uh, I can't remember. I think it's the end of next week. Trade room is open from 9 a.m. until 12 noon Eastern time. Uh, yes, the video will be posted by Ninja Trader, and it'll be on their uh, ecosystem and YouTube, and they will uh, send it out also, I think. Yeah, don't worry so much about slippage until you've learned how to place our trades. I'm going to I'm going to encourage you to take uh, uh, only limit orders at first. And I wouldn't worry about that slippage and don't worry about the minus seven either because not all trades go to minus seven. Sometimes we're able to um, uh, manage our stops to the point where we get break even or plus one or whatever. Yeah, Eric, that's what a lot of people do. And then they come in the trade room, they hang out with us in the trade room for a couple of weeks. They see what's going on and realize, oh man, I need this other stuff. <laughs> I personally, uh, actually, uh, what if I told you what I do personally, it wouldn't matter very much because you don't have the experience that I that I have. But let's just say yes. Now you want to trade it when when there's a lot of liquidity, Justin. Uh, that you want you want other people interested. If you're trading after hours and nobody else is trading, the, the big boys aren't trading either. And we need them, right? We need them. So we need volatility. So if you want to do after hours, wait until London session. That seems to be pretty good. I don't do it, but I, I know we have traders that do. We have a lot of traders in Australia that like to trade the London session. Like 3, 2.30, 3 in the morning, 2 o'clock, 2 three, something like that, a.m. Eastern time, I think. All right, Thomas, I think we could do this all day, but let's uh, let's go ahead and turn it back over to you. And everybody, thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope you found this very interesting. Uh, please come join us on Saturday. Send us an email at support at the intentional trader .com. If you've got any questions or any of your links aren't working, uh, thank Ninja Trader for putting this on for all of us, for us here at the Intentional Trader, and for you guys. Hopefully, it was very enlightening for you, um, and uh, we'll hopefully be hearing from you all soon. Thanks. Bye now.